I must remember not to say Wednesday it is not Wednesday it is definitely not Wednesday hello everyone welcome yes here we are again and we are back together joining as one <laughs> today as we begin another English addict but this is English addict extra and yes it is not Wednesday do not worry it is Thursday and yes we are coming to you live from the birthplace of the English language which just happens to be England I'm still getting ready just just a moment I will be with you in a moment I'm, I'm still getting ready you see I, I will tell you what happened I was walking around the house and I thought I had a lot of time left I thought I have ages I have a very long time before I should come on and do my live stream so I thought I had a lot of time left but I looked at my watch and it was two o'clock so I ran around the house I got dressed and you just saw me putting my watch on so now I definitely know what time it is hi everybody <laughs> this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy I hope you are feeling happy today it feels strange because I'm not with you on my normal day of course I am always with you on Sunday that is when you can catch me at the weekend but I'm normally with you on Wednesday as well and you may have noticed I was not with you yesterday because we went off we had a lovely time in fact we went away on Tuesday we visited some friends and also we went to visit a very lovely place yesterday which we will we will be taking a look at a little bit later on so here we are yes as I said at the start of today's live stream it is not Wednesday it's a little bit different because it's Thursday Yes, it's Thursday. It does feel very strange being here <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> it feels really weird saying Thursday, if I was honest with you. So normally I'm with you on Wednesday, but yesterday we were away, which is why I was not here. But I'm back with you today, so it does feel very strange being with you on Thursday. I have to be honest with you. I might say Wednesday now and again for which I hope you will forgive me yes we are back together again and it's a, it's a very strange day today I want I want to describe the weather to you but it is just gloomy still not much wind <laughs> so there it is it's very overcast very gray it is what I would call a nondescript day nondescript if something is nondescript it means it is average there is nothing special about it it is a simple bland day it is nondescript it is hard to describe so there it is the view outside right now outside the window and it's a rather gloomy day I suppose well I do suppose it's worth mentioning that we have now gone into autumn meteorological autumn because summer has ended although it is still summer but normally we say from the 1st of September it means that summer has ended and autumn 
is beginning but don't worry about that it's still summer at least it is where I'm standing it is shining in my heart the warm summer glow is here thank you for joining me today uh, I hope you are you are not too shocked because I am with you on Thursday this week next week it will be back to normal I will be back with you on Sunday and next Wednesday so everything next week will go back to normal <gasps> by the way we have a special guest are you looking forward to finding out who the special guest is today we have a very special guest joining us not recorded not through Skype right here in this studio a big celebrity a very big one a huge celebrity in fact you might say that he is one of the biggest biggest celebrities on the internet right now he really is and he's right here in this studio he's waiting just over there he's he's eating an apple and he's not using his mouth let's just say so thanks for joining me once again yes we have the live stream and also that means we have the live chat as well oh hello to the live chat hi there thank you for joining me today it's very nice to see you here it really is okay oh very interesting it would appear that once more the man with the fastest finger in the world is once again first on today's live chat congratulations once again to Vitas guess what <laughs> who remembers many many years ago especially if you live here in the UK there was a, a particular song a very famous song and it stayed at number one in the music charts for many 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 weeks and people got really bored of it Brian Adams who remembers that one everything I do I do it for you I think it was taken from was it Robin Hood Prince of Thieves I think it was and it was at number one for many many weeks and people started complaining so this is going back many years by the way not recently but people started complaining because Brian Adams Brian Adams everything I do I do it for you was it number one I think it's about 20 was it 21 weeks it was something ridiculous I know you will tell me I know you are going to Google Google it right now Brian Adams everything I do I do for you was it number one in the charts here in the UK for many weeks I think it was 25 or 26 weeks something ridiculous and I'm pretty sure <laughs> you are going to tell me but what I'm going to say now is Vitas Vitas is a little bit like Brian Adams because every week Vitas is first on the live chat <laughs> so congratulations Vitas guess what you are first on today's live stream <laughs> well I suppose that deserves something else as well I think that deserves a big super duper fancy pants <laughs> That's enough. We can't have too much excitement. We've only just begun, as the carpenters once said. So, how many weeks did Brian Adams stay at number one in the charts here in the UK? I think it was about 24, 25 weeks. It might, it, it might not have been that long, but it feels like it. It felt like 25 weeks. Oh. We also have hello also to Mosen. Hello Mosen, nice to see you here as well. 
on the live stream we have Beatrice Palmira we also have Luis Mendez hello Luis Mendez nice to see you back I believe you had a very busy weekend last weekend so that's the reason why you were only with us on Sunday for a few moments I did notice that you did pop on and then you popped off you disappeared because you had had a very busy weekend also Randa hello Randa nice to see you here I don't recognize your name is it your first time Mayori 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 is here again Shirin hello Shirin it seems like a very long time since I last saw you here on the live stream how long is how long has it been it feels like a very long time since I last saw you hello a sketch hello a sketch I like your name by the way I hope I pronounced it correctly Alessandra is here also we have So many messages everyone saying hello hello mr duncan hello everyone hello 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 also to beatrice we also have now i'm reading some of the messages today but the names i can't actually read because they are in arabic so please excuse me if i don't read your name out but hello to everyone on the live chat also we have Ricardo we have Anita hello Anita I, I always remember there was a song in the charts many years ago by a, a lady called Anita Baker and it was a beautiful song sweet love <laughs> I forget the words now I can't remember the words to be honest hello flower hello Kinshiro as well hello to you can I give you a lovely wave there it is there is a Mr Duncan special wave this is my new wave by the way so this is my normal wave and this is my special wave <laughs> hello also to <laughs> Ming Min Yungi hello to you as well to Min Yungi nice to see you here as well Even uh, Eveni Eveni Skibin or Shibin thank you very much for joining me today oh hello from Argentina hello Sass Sass S hello to you watching in Argentina hello to Argentina and I suppose I will give you a special hello as well also we have pinky lion <laughs> I'm not sure why you are called pinky lion but I'm sure you will tell me hello to you and welcome I welcome everyone everyone is welcome to my live stream everyone I never tell anyone to go away unless of course you are really really rude to me but everyone is welcome here on my live stream and my live chat everything is lively and fun we also have oh claudia hello claudia nice to see you here today there it is my special wave this is my new special wave that i'm doing also we have <laughs> i'm really worried today i don't know why i feel slightly worried about everyone on the live stream because I, I think something is going to happen I have a very strange feeling about it up my left leg hello also to Khan Nguyen hello Khan Nguyen nice to see you back watching in Vietnam I think so Tomek says Robin Hood everything I do I do for you hmm, yes Belarusia says I like Brian Adams well I, I, I like Brian Adams but I can remember way back in I think it was 1992 maybe around 1992 lots of people were getting very annoyed here in the UK because Brian Adams was at number one and it seemed like forever 
and everyone was getting really sick of hearing that song they really were they, they, they were going crazy about it please no more no more Brian Adams for a while Beatrice also likes Brian Adams okay I better be careful what I'm saying well so do I I love Brian Adams in fact I wish I could marry him that's how much I love him mm, very much hello <laughs> hello Christina hello Christina I like your name by the way very unusual it is an interesting name today we are talking about lots of different subjects we also have our special guest oh, Wow! we have a special guest right here in the studio not recorded but live right here in the studio coming up I wonder who it is I wonder who today's special guest is hello Zudzika don't forget Zudzika is a man hello also <laughs> oh by the way hello Tomek are you going to cause trouble today I wonder hello also <laughs> Milud watching in Algeria can I say hello to you as well and a big special wave to everyone in Algeria very nice Axmed all teaching is funny when explaining something well as I always say teaching and learning c can be fun I think so so not only for you learning out there but also for me teaching so I think teaching can be a very fun profession it can be a fun activity but also I think that learning can be fun it can be an interesting thing to do especially when you are enjoying it hello Min Yungi aware again hello to you as well Milad says I like your hat Mr. Duncan thank you very much do you like my hat yes it's it's rather nice it's very comfortable it's the only hat that I could find that would fit my big head you may have noticed my head is rather large especially at the top so it's very hard for me to find hats that fit this big bulbous head it really is hello Fabio it is a long time that I did not get get in touch with you greetings to everybody one from Pisa by Fabio and the learning tower I'm intrigued I want to know more about your learning tower is it a bit like the leaning tower I have a feeling it might be the leaning tower not the learning tower <laughs> sorry about that I misread it I wanted to know I wanted to know what the learning tower was it sounds very interesting but in fact you meant yes the leaning tower the leaning tower of Pisa has it fallen over yet hello Dex says man you've got old you're right I am I'm much older than I was in the past and guess what <laughs> in the future I'm also going to be much older than I am now yeah. so there it is today's deep thought with Mr Duncan Mustafa is here as well Mohammed Bashir hello to you a special hello and oh did you, did you like that it's my new wave do you like my new wave I think it will be the new trend on the internet as Sketchum says in my opinion Elton John is better than Brian Adams oh I think we have a bit of a battle going on here Brian Adams and Elton John I wonder who would win if they had a fight with each other maybe if they got into a little boxing ring and they could do a little bit of fighting in boxing I wonder who would win I think Elton John would win I think he would Hello. <laughs> hello Mosin nice to see you here as well Christina again I think I've said hello to you as well already wow so many people here but how many weeks can you find out because because I don't know I can't remember it was a long time ago how many weeks was Brian Adams in the charts 
at number one with everything I do I do for you how many weeks was he there please tell me we are talking about some interesting subjects as I mentioned we are talking about lucky charms Ooh, okay then now I know what you're going to say mr. Duncan lucky charms is a type of breakfast cereal you can have it in the morning uh, and they are very fruity and lovely lucky charms well I'm not on about those lucky charms I am actually on about a different type of lucky charm so do you have a lucky charm do you have something that you keep with you all the time to keep you safe so a lot of people do believe that if you have something nearby something that you believe brings you good luck it can be anything I suppose really when you think about it a lucky charm can be anything so as long as you believe that that thing will bring luck to you you'll keep it nearby so do you have a lucky charm is there something that you like to keep maybe on your person or in your purse or your handbag or maybe something you like to have in your pocket and you believe that it brings good luck so does anyone have a lucky charm there are a lot of different types of lucky charm there are many lucky charms that we can keep maybe in our pocket or maybe we can have it hanging around our wrist so there are many different types of lucky charm so what about you do you have a lucky charm and there you can see on the screen right now there are many different types of lucky charm so these particular lucky charms can be can be worn on your wrist or maybe hanging from a necklace many different types of lucky charm can be worn and there is a selection right now on the screen so let's have a quick look at some of the lucky charms very quickly and then we have our mystery guest coming into the studio as well so for example we have this one so this is your lucky charm and this is a pack of cards so maybe a small thing that you hang on your wrist or maybe on a necklace can be a lucky charm so these are your lucky cards some people like to keep this on their on their key ring or on their necklace because they believe it will give them good luck here's another one Ooh, maybe a four-leaf clover because many people believe that a four-leaf clover is lucky so they wear a four leaf clover because they believe it will bring them good luck maybe you have a lucky dice maybe if you are a person who gambles a lot maybe you are a gambler and you like to go to the casino perhaps you will keep this lucky charm on your wrist or in your pocket because you believe it will bring good luck so when we talk about lucky charms they are things that we keep on them i think another word you can use is talisman <gasps> Ooh, i like that word very much by the way a talisman something you keep on you because it might bring you good fortune or good luck another one here is another type of lucky charm <laughs> oh dear well <laughs> unless of course you are an animal rights campaigner you might not be pleased with this one but this particular lucky charm is part of a rabbit a rabbit's foot so some people believe that if you if you keep a rabbit's foot nearby or on your person maybe in your pocket or in your purse 
<laughs> they believe it will bring good luck however it will not bring good luck to the rabbit because the rabbit will have no feet so <laughs> maybe nowadays people do not have a rabbit's foot as a lucky charm in fact I don't know why I really don't know why people do wear a rabbit's foot as a lucky charm because from my point of view it doesn't seem very lucky at all especially for the rabbit definitely not here's another one now this is a very well-known lucky charm this is a horseshoe and a lot of people will keep a horseshoe such as this maybe in their house or outside their house so the belief is that the horseshoe will collect all of the good luck because it is a little bit like a cup so people believe that the lucky horseshoe will help all of the good luck to come your way and stay with you and that is the reason why a lot of people like to have a lucky horseshoe in their house or somewhere nearby we have two more and then we're taking a break because our mystery guest is on the way here's another one perhaps you have a lucky number maybe there is a number that you believe will bring you good luck a lucky number I used to believe many years ago I used to like to think that my lucky number was number four I don't know why I always felt that number four was was my lucky number I don't know why but I always felt as if it was <laughs> some people believe that they're in superstitions some people believe in they believe in astrology of course they believe that the stars in the sky will will direct them in a certain direction in their life so there are many different types of lucky charm you might also have a lucky day maybe there is a day of the week that you feel brings you good luck is there a certain day of the week that you believe is lucky so there you might have a lucky day some people like the end of the week maybe Thursday or Friday because it means that the working week is coming to an end many people don't like Mondays because normally that means you have to start work it is it is the beginning of the working week so some people like to carry lucky charms and some people don't what about you Min Yungi says my lucky number is number three number three is there any particular reason why number three is your lucky number so mine I always thought number four was my lucky number but then I realized when I went to China China is actually <laughs> not a big fan of number four so when I went to China I realized that that in Chinese tradition number four is actually considered unlucky completely the opposite hello also to Fernando who says those poor rabbits they only have three feet yes it might be lucky for the person wearing the rabbit's foot but it certainly is not lucky for the rabbit what does lucky charm mean well a charm is something that might bring you good luck something that you believe will bring good fortune to you you can also use the word talisman as well talisman a thing that represents good fortune but quite often you have to believe as well in that thing so if it is something that you believe will bring you good luck you trust that thing and you if you have it nearby <laughs> it means it will bring you good luck then you can describe it as a lucky charm something you keep nearby that will bring you good
good look yes thank you Xin Din says in China do they believe that the number four is bad because it sounds like death yes you are right because in Chinese the number four also sounds like the word for death and that's the reason why quite often they consider number four to be unlucky that is the reason why would you like to see a mystery idiom we are going to take a little break in a moment because we have a mystery idiom coming up we also have a mystery guest as well coming into the studio so here it is today's mystery idiom look at the screen I will only keep it on the screen for a few moments and there it is if you think you know the answer to today's mystery idiom it is a well-known expression it is a well-known thing in English a well-known proverb a well-known expression or idiom talking of idioms we will be looking at idioms a little bit later on as well because we are talking about animal idioms and you might be surprised to find out just how many animal idioms there are so you might not even realize that there are so many and that is something we are looking at a little bit later on and also we will be finding out where I went yesterday I had a lovely day yesterday visiting somewhere in one of my most favorite parts of the world but right now we will take a break and then after this we have our mystery guest coming into the studio live as live can be this is an excerpt from one of my full English lessons this is taken from full English number 10 Do you have an affinity with something? Is there something or someone you have an affinity with? The word affinity means a natural liking for or an understanding of something. A natural connection means that you do not have to force yourself to do it. The connection or understanding comes naturally. For example, to have an affinity with numbers means that you are naturally good at arithmetic. A relationship can form from the affinity between two people. They get along together naturally, without the need to force themselves. Long-term friendships and relationships are often built on a mutual affinity. To have an affinity can also mean a connection between things with similar characteristics. When two things relate, they have an affinity. The affinity shared between animals, plants, places, and languages. It's time to take a look at another current buzzword. A buzzword is a phrase or sentence that is used frequently or often. Today's buzzword is engage or engagement the word engage is used a lot these days to express the interest or attention given by those watching or viewing something to engage with someone is to connect with them so as to get their attention interest or involvement if you engage with a person then they are more likely to stay with you a television program must engage with a person or else they will stop watching movie makers politicians newspaper editors all try to keep people interested and involved by trying to engage with those they wish to connect with engagement is the action of connecting with something TV producers are finding it harder to engage with their audience politicians need to engage more with the young
I don't know about you, but I love receiving good news. Hearing something positive can really perk you up. It makes you feel uplifted and warm. There are many ways of expressing surprise and joy at someone's good news. That's awesome. Really? That's incredible. That's amazing. Fantastic. Wow. I'm pleased to hear that. If the good news involves the person telling it to you, you can say, I'm pleased for you. Congratulations. Well done. Good for you. You might express complete shock and disbelief at the good news. No way. You're kidding. Oh my goodness. For real? I'm speechless. There are many ways of expressing joy at someone's good news. When was the last time you received some good news? How did you react to it? With surprise, shock or disbelief? Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm making myself a sandwich. A sandwich is a very convenient snack. You can make one easily. You can rustle up a sandwich very fast. To rustle up means to produce or create a meal with little preparation or time. You can rustle up a meal for someone. Right now, I'm rustling up a snack for myself. I will cut a couple of slices of bread from this loaf. Spread some butter on each slice. Then I will add some filling. Something to go inside the sandwich. You can put almost anything inside a sandwich. Cheese, lettuce, tomato, peanut butter, even slices of banana. Today, I'm going to put some jam in this sandwich. Some people just eat one slice of bread with something spread on top. You can toast a sandwich and enjoy it heated up. The sandwich is often considered as being a very British snack, which is not surprising when you consider that it was invented by an Englishman, John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Yes, Sandwich is not only a snack, it is also a place. That is it. <laughs> Don't forget you can catch up with all of my English lessons by clicking on the playlists. Learning English with Mr. Duncan. Ask Mr. Duncan. The word stop. And of course, my full English lessons as well. With all of these lessons, you will discover that the world of English is indeed a fun and exciting place to be. It sure is. Here we go. Yes, we are back live. It is English Addict. <laughs> and yes, I am live today. Live in the studio. But who is our special guest? Well, right next to me, I have Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. And through the means of special effects, <laughs> I'm going to reveal today's mystery guest. Here he is. Yes, it's a man. Well, almost. Not quite. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you today's 
special guest in the studio it's mr steve <laughs> <coughs> oh mr duncan well you had me under that that green cloak oh it was a bit uh, it's a bit stuffy i thought i was going to sneeze because it was all dusty not very nice i wonder what that looked like to our viewers was it I, exciting it was very exciting i was <laughs> i was very excited <sighs> Well, as you can see, I am not exactly dressed for the studio environment. No. Are you going out? I'm going out. Yes. I haven't got time really to be on this live stream. I, I'm so busy, Mr. Duncan. I'm in the garden. I'm watching the Internet. I haven't got time to be here with you all, even though I love to do it. I'm only joking. Of course, mm. I probably say I'm only going to be here 10 minutes and I'll probably be here for the entire hour. This is what happens every time. Steve says I will only be here for a few moments, but then you end up staying for an hour. Well, you see, I'm just too busy, even though I'm on holiday. It's busy, busy, busy. I never stop, Mr. Duncan. Talking of holidays mm -hmm. yesterday and the day before, we actually went away to see some friends of ours and we had a lovely time. That's also the reason why I was not here yesterday. I was actually away somewhere. And so was Mr. Steve, who went yes. somewhere lovely yesterday. One of our most favorite parts of the world. We went to Wales and as you know I love the Welsh countryside I love all of the views would you like to see a quick video of where we were we, we went somewhere yesterday so we saw our friends we also went to see one of your work colleagues yesterday and uh, then after that we went somewhere rather nice we visited a place a well-known place in Wales and there is a clue it has something to do with trains <laughs> you will see in a moment something will be revealed on the screen in fact you will see the name of the place that we visited and there it is oh <laughs> that sign says Langochlan Langochlan which is the pronunciation of the place that you can see now on your screen it's a beautiful place it has a lovely river flowing through the middle of it this is in fact the river d so this particular river and you can see in certain parts of that area the water is flowing very vigorously and also langochlan <laughs> is well known for its train station but no ordinary train station mr steve it's a steam railway station so they have steam trains and lots of people visit every year to take a ride on the local steam train and once again you can see the wild river the river d so it's quite a nice place the one thing we did notice though steve mm -hmm. it was very busy it was very very busy because a lot of people in uh, the UK because obviously because of the coronavirus mm -hmm. we can't travel as easily as we did before and us Brits love to go abroad on our holidays to particularly sunny Spain Greece are two very popular destinations for yes. us we can't go there at the moment or it's a bit difficult so a lot of people are holidaying in the UK yes so it's it's a lovely place to visit in Wales because of course this particular place is also surrounded by lots and lots of beautiful countryside and that's one of the reasons why I love Wales so much because of all of lovely all the lovely countryside the scenery and there you can see the famous station this particular place is visited by millions of people every year come to this place and uh, there's a little theme there <laughs> a suitcase on the platform I've or got to say Mr Duncan it's oh, you uh, or however you pronounce <laughs> it uh, <laughs> if you're well, I say Langollen uh, that was how a, that's how a British person yes. would pronounce it, but it's a Welsh name by the way that's a restaurant that old carriage. train carriage is in fact I would say a very down market tea room. 
<laughs> it's not it's got a theme how dare you how dare you criticize that a lot of people love coming here well it's very popular it's very popular is is langolan okay or Lan, how did you pronounce it Mr. langochlan langochlan that's it is is how the welsh would pronounce it um uh, it's very popular. I would say among not you wouldn't say amongst the the wealthy in society. What? What are you talking well, about? I'm just saying it's it's for sort of average people. Yeah, are you uh, saying that wealthy people have no interest in trains? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that the place itself. Okay. Uh, is um, you know it's very nice, it's very pleasant, but I don't see any high class hotels there. But there are some beautiful hotels in Langochland. would attract the glitterate okay, and then. the rich and famous. By the way, there's Mr. Steve. You can see uh, him walking away, looking miserable. Looking miserable, you as were, I always do. You were really miserable yesterday. I was uh, going to do a live stream yesterday and Steve didn't want to. I did. I, it, I, always, I always object at first because I feel nervous that people are watching. <laughs> and then you know what I'm like, Mr. Duncan. Once you start, I'm away and that's, and that's fine. Uh, but but yes, we had a nice day out. It was lovely. Well, we had a nice night with our friends and who live in Wales, and then we visited my and then we went to Langollen, uh, which is the correct pronunciation of Langollen. One of the great uh, things about <laughs> Welsh, what I love about the Welsh language, is you can speak and also clear your throat at the same time. Interesting, Crostina VI says that Mr. Steve, isn't he working today? No, Mr. Steve uh, is having two weeks holiday. So this is now your second week. Second week. And interestingly enough, I noticed that Palmyra mm -hmm. isn't working anymore. What? Ever again? Well, I think from what I'm reading on the live stream, Palmyra uh, has retired. Oh, my goodness from work completely well that's what i'm reading into the chat so palmyra is it true have you retired completely she seemed very happy from the comment she made yes so uh yes from someone who is just on holiday to somebody who has retired mm. uh, have you retired early because you've made lots of money in investments <laughs> or do you retire because different countries retire at different ages don't they the people retire at different ages it is true uh in the uk it's quite high right i mean it's 66 67 for most people now in the uk it depends you see uh depends on your age but most people you know like my age i don't retire even though i'm obviously 60 I'm, i can't retire i can't get a state pension until i'm 66 okay. this is starting to sound 67 but uh, you know so in other countries it's 55 okay uh, like but Malaysia, for example. Palmyra, have you retired? Have you? And well, we'll ask. The, well, we know the country, but uh, we we don't have to know your age no. because you don't ask the age no, of the lady. You don't have to. But what, normally, when you retire, we say that you hang up. So whatever it is you are doing in your job, we say that you are hanging it up. So, for example, if you are working as a chef in a kitchen. You might say that you are retiring. You have decided to hang up your apron. You have decided to hang it up. That means you are you are going to stop doing that as your job. You are retiring. So in interesting. Dudzika uh, is is actually working today, so can't see the live stream properly, mm. but has managed to come on. You must be skiving work to make a comment on the live stream. Well, well done. Well, one of the wonderful things nowadays is you can have your phone right in front of you and still be doing your job. So sometimes people do that. They will sneak away from their job or they might become distracted by their mobile phones. Well, in the future, when we get more and more connectivity to the Internet and and the metaverse, takes over we'll be able to be we'll be wired into the internet and the, our, they won't even know at work your boss won't know you'll be wired in you'll be able to do your job and watch mr duncan at the same time yes. and no one will know well the only problem with mr steve i think i think lots of his fuses will blow and all of his wires will melt inside his brain oh palmyra so. says yes i'm a director of free weather what does that mean 
I worked one school year as pensioner. This year, I decided to quit 40 as a teen. 40 years as a teacher. That is enough. I agree. 40 years is enough in any job. Um, I'm assuming you enjoyed it for some of that time. Yeah. So you've decided <laughs> to you've decided to hang up your chalk or to hang up your your mortarboard or maybe you've decided to hang up your exercise books because you are going to do that job no longer. Oh, I see. So even though Palmyra is retired, she had she's carried on working for one year. Oh, I see. As a pensioner just to get the 40 years i'm guessing oh nice to have that 40 years mm. it looks good on on a piece of paper yes <laughs> so you'll be taking your atomics having a break at the moment oh. from what yes we'd like to know from yes. what i think it's work but yes. it could be something else it might be work it might be something else yes <laughs> who knows <laughs> who knows with tomek belarusia so says dentist pension is so little money I think I'll have to work 70 years. Well, that's very interesting because in the UK, dentists are seen as very wealthy because they charge a lot of money you seem for a dentist. You seem obsessed today with money and wealth and class. It's just not really. I'm just commenting on but it. But you are right. No, I agree with you. In dentists. the UK, dentists is a very high... Yeah, come to the UK, <laughs> Belarusi. You, you'll earn a fortune. You yeah. can retire very early. Because dentists make a lot. They're, they're as high as doctors in the yeah. UK. Almost as high as a doctor in terms of status and earnings. You can charge anything. Yes. You can because, because it's very hard to get free treatment in the UK for your teeth. But there are lots of people doing it privately and they can they can charge anything. Maybe if you want one of your teeth pulled out, they might charge you. 50 60 pounds 60 pounds to have your tooth pulled out oh, Tomic is, is 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 taking a break from work he's the breadwinner <laughs> so he's got to work yes well i know that feeling yes although this week steve is having a little bit of a rest and we had a lovely time yesterday we also had some nice food at a lovely little restaurant isn't it strange if you are in a strange place that you you don't know quite often you will see a place that, that sells food or serves food and somehow you will know you know already that the food in there will be nice and that's what happened yesterday we saw this lovely little restaurant Italian and I knew I could tell just by the appearance of that place that the food inside was good and guess what I was right we had lasagna yesterday some lovely lasagna. Very predictable in, in an Italian restaurant. Well, uh, I was going to have a calzone mm. and I changed my mind. Yes. And he only uh, changed his mind because I had I wanted lasagna and then he changed his mind to what I had. It was it was, yeah, it was I tell you what, I knew we were in the right place as soon as we walked in because the waiters were all very attractive. Oh, OK, if you say so. <laughs> It's, oh, it's it's Vietnam's Independence Day today. Is it really? Yes. Happy Independence Day to Vietnam. I wish I had the Vietnamese flag here. I could wave it to you. But happy Independence Day to Vietnam. We, we, we certainly know the story behind that, by the way. Mary, yes. Mary Fur is retired also and enjoying free time. Yes, exactly. So I noticed that earlier on about uh, Vietnam oh, very nice a, a lot of people are, are actually enjoying their complete free time because you've stopped working very nice I wish I could say the same thing can I just say YouTube does not give me a pension <laughs> so so when I stop doing this I don't get anything from YouTube I don't get any pension from YouTube they should have one YouTube if you're listening you have to give pensions especially to publishers who've been on for 15 years and that includes me you see so that's the reason why I said that I wish I'd had the calzone yesterday now oh because uh, or is it calzoni it's a bit late now how do you pronounce calzone is it calzone or calzoni I'm not sure I, Anybody I Italian I, watching I always think that the E is actually pronounced so it's like calzoni it should be mm. I think in Italian you pronounce every letter yes I think 
I think you do like a bit like in German I think like minestrone so or I think it's calzone or spaghetti <laughs> uh, are we from Wales no we are not we're not but we live very close to Wales and we like visiting Wales mainly because it's close and we don't have to travel too far and also it's beautiful it's very nice some very nice places to visit well mr steve have you uh, are you ready to go uh, oh yes trying to get rid of me already um well actually I see, I actually see. steve said to me I, i'm only going to be on for about five minutes okay because i've got other things to do so that's the reason why you can stay here forever if you want it's very cold do you know we came back it's very cold in the uk at the moment it's only about 7, 16 17 degrees outside it's unseasonably below what you would expect the temperature to be it's cold it's cold we actually had to put the heating on last night yeah. <gasps> in early september almost unheard of. we put the we put the central heating on last night i can't believe that i'm cold now my fingers have gone numb oh. on the end well it, it's always warm in your studio because of the hot lights yes uh although you have invested in some low energy ones recently yes uh which is you know we're going to be freezing in here in the wind you have to get those big heavy thousand watt bulbs out mr duncan in the winter just to warm up your studio okay uh well yes i think i will go i think i will because i don't want to overstay my welcome yes that's what you say if you stay too long somewhere uh, and uh, people are sick and tired of you uh, they say, oh, he overstayed his welcome. I think or we, she overstayed his welcome. I think welcome. we did. <laughs> I think we did that <laughs> yesterday. <didn't we? laughs> I think we did that yesterday with with our friends. We, 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 we were supposed to leave in the morning, but we just sat there talking and talking and, and we didn't leave. And I think they wanted us to go. So so we do have a bit of a habit. Mr. Steve and myself, we do have a habit of overstaying are welcome oh no people always want us to say oh, don't go mr steve mr duncan oh we love your company please <laughs> stay for longer they were not saying that uh, yesterday they were not definitely a sketchum says cold weather always better well at least in cold weather if it's cold you can warm up can't you mm. you can put on extra layers put the heating on you can always get warmer but if it's very hot it's very difficult to get cooler unless you've got air conditioning which most of the uk doesn't have yes uh although both are equally as bad you can freeze to death and also you can be so hot that you die as well talking of which outside our window here at the studio we have an, a, a half eaten pheasant yes a pheasant that it, that has now been eaten by various birds large you, large crows has he told the story i haven't i'm about to so we were sitting down on I think it was Friday wasn't it was yes it, was it uh, no it was no, it, probably Monday. Monday Monday evening we sat down to have our meal and suddenly I heard this huge boom coming from my studio and I knew exactly what it was a bird had flown into one of my windows uh, but we knew it was a big bird because the, the sound was <laughs> incredible it was it was quite loud in fact we were expecting a pigeon so we went outside we thought it would be a pigeon the usual birds that sort of a bit dumb always fly into the windows but it wasn't it, it was wasn't. it was a young pheasant yes and even even a young pheasant is quite big so this young pheasant flew into the window sadly it did not survive because well it, it did hit the window quite hard didn't it well I, I I thought it had broken the window no, it was. Uh, and it was a big heavy bird and it's the first time we've had a pheasant pheasants are birds that don't fly that often no they tend to they tend to sort of walk or run they only fly when they really feel as though they're in danger because they're not particularly good flyers yes and this particular one was young and I think something must have scared it and probably seeing Mr Duncan at the window and uh, I wasn't at the been, window. Well, I'm joking. And uh, it, yes, it was, it was a terrific third. We went outside. The poor thing. Oh, Mr. Duncan. It was still alive. It was still alive. We actually watched it breathe its last. Yes. I've never seen. I've never seen an animal die before in front of me. So it dramatic. made a strange noise. It went sort of. 
and it, yes. that's it it died it, it made this expired before yeah. our eyes so i've never seen an animal die in front of me before it sort of was writhing a bit it was horrible to is watch this, is this cheering you up by the way i think it must have damaged its neck or something or oh, it was just what? it was like a horror film yeah I've, I've never seen an animal just die like that in front I of me know. it was quite we both stood there and watched this thing happening in front of us yeah, and so there so was its chest rise and then fall for the yeah, last time. But it made us this Seems rather horrible. sad, sad noise as well, as if it was calling out for the last time. Yes, it, it was. It was heart wrenching. And we stood there helpless. There was nothing we could do. Nothing we could. Nothing do. we could do. Mm. We thought it would revive, but unfortunately, anyway, it didn't. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, it's uh, now outside, half eaten. Yes, we we didn't have time to move it before we went off to see our friends on Tuesday and uh, well we forgot about it to be honest yes and uh, when we came back we've now got this sight of a half eaten bird yes so so uh, there is there is some of the pheasant left but not much of it because we have lots of predators around here lots of crows there are there, there are certain types of animal that will only eat dead animals it's very strange and these are called carrion carrion so an animal that is a carrion will actually eat not only live animals it won't just kill them and eat them but it would also eat animals that have died so carcasses a dead animal they will actually eat that as well you might say that vultures are like that aren't they steve well we thought a fox or you know would a fox would come and take the whole bird away but I don't think we have many foxes in this area because uh, foxes are controlled in the UK, particularly yes. in farming areas, because they take sort of chickens and, and, and small lambs and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of culling takes place of, anyway, of foxes. So if, got we it. were hoping that, yeah, it yeah. would be it's, it's just trying to get rid of me, aren't you? I'm I, not. You never I've let no, me finish I, sentences. I, the, you're normally obsessed with the live chat, but you haven't mentioned it once. I, ha I have mentioned it several times. Here we go. He's not Steve. listening. He's not listening to a thing. Luis Mendez says you could take the pheasant and cook it. I know. We well, could have done. Well, not now. There's not much meat left now, unfortunately. Uh, and there's lots of flies sort of laying their eggs inside. It's so be... I don't think I don't think we're going to be cooking that for our supper tonight. Well, <laughs> give it a decent burial. <laughs> What's left of it? Well, we'll throw it over the fence. It's just a pile of feathers now. It was beautiful close up. I've never seen a pheasant so close up. The beautiful colour. It was a male pheasant, so it was uh, had all the lovely colourings. Um, and it had the most, oh, it's just beautiful. Anyway, it's gone. Yes. All right, I'm going to cry. On, and, that, uh, on that happy note. I will go now, Mr Duncan. Is this a nice little, you know, point for me to depart? It would be, because we're going to watch you cutting the the grass in the garden oh. so whilst whilst you disappear uh, and what what are you going out for i'm going out to the garden center because i want to put in some more plants in the garden and i've run out of soil sort of peat to mix in with our very clay soil because okay. you don't just put a plant in you've got to put some nice compost in around it okay just, just give us the basic that. details not a, we don't need a ted talk and i'm going to have a look at the plants there at the nursery as well okay. um so yes that's what i'm going to do then i'm going to put some more plants in the garden and then we're going to have a cup of tea we can't watch colombo because it's not sunday well we could watch it but from a video but we're not going to anyway oh i'm going on too long yes bye everyone and hopefully see you on sunday and maybe mr duncan can bore you all with what plants i've been putting in in the garden we, we, we will be watching you in the garden making your holes and putting your little plants in those holes we'll be very interested to find out what <laughs> you actually bought don't forget steve is back with us on sunday from 2 p.m uk time yes. thank you steve Thank you, in Mr. Few, Duncan. In a few moments, we're going to look at some lovely, cute animals and we are going to look at some idioms connected to animals as well. And there are lots in the English language. So thank you, Mr. Steve. Thank you. Please don't forget to like this video so that Mr. Duncan can spread far and wide and it attracts more people to the channel mm. and thus makes Mr. Duncan more successful. Very nice.
All right, Mr. Duncan, see you soon and see you all on Sunday. There was Mr. Steve, not only live, but also in the garden last weekend, <laughs> having a lot of fun uh, cutting the grass. Mmm, we have about another 20 minutes another 20 minutes to go and then I will also go but don't worry I will be back with you on Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time so I hope you will join me then so today we were talking about lucky charms it's amazing how many people do still carry things around maybe in their pocket or maybe on their on their wrist that they believe brings good fortune sometimes the thing might be part of an animal talking of which ah, you see did you see what i did there talking of which we are going to look at some cute animals but also also we are going to look at some animal idioms here is the mystery idiom i've been asked to show it again there it is so that is today's mystery idiom it is a well-known expression in the english language and all you have to do is tell me what it actually is what is it it is a well-known expression in english and all you have to do is tell me what it is it's as simple as that i will give you the answer a little bit later on here we go then idioms i am always fascinated by idioms I love idioms so much and there are many different types of idiom that exist in the English language some of them relate to one particular subject or one type of thing for example animals which is what we're doing right now so here are some animal idioms to finish today's live stream English addict on Thursday <laughs> I have to say it feels very strange to be with you on Thursday it really does very weird indeed here we go then we have some idioms connected to animals here is the first one oh a leopard never changes its spots a leopard never changes its spots of course when you think of a leopard you can see an animal that is covered in spots and you might say that as an idiom we are saying that a person never changes their ways a person will never change the way they behave or maybe if they have part of their character that you you don't agree with maybe they are a bad person maybe they are a person who often cheats or lies you might say that a leopard never changes its spots so once a person begins doing something if their characteristic is that particular thing quite often it is difficult for someone to change their behavior or maybe their character so that is what that means it refers to a person not changing their behavior a leopard never changes its spots the early bird catches the worm if you get up in the morning very early you will see lots of birds flying around looking for worms quite often in the morning you will see many animals looking for food the early bird catches the worm means the person who does something first or early quite often will be the one that wins 
or gets the best prize or the best result so to do something before anyone else quite often can bring you many benefits the early bird catches the worm if you do something before anyone else or before other people quite often you will get some reward do it before anyone else here's another one you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink you can lead a horse to the water but you can't make it drink so this refers to advice that you might give to someone maybe you give some advice to a friend but that's all you can do to give advice does not mean that the person will take your advice so they might listen to what you say but they might ignore your advice so you can lead a horse to the water but you can't make it drink it means you can give advice or help to someone but it doesn't mean they will listen to you it doesn't mean that they will take your advice so that is all you can do you can offer your help you can offer your advice but it doesn't mean that a person will take your advice you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink a bird in the hand hello is worth two in the bush a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush something that you already have quite often is more valuable than something that you are trying to get or you are trying to pursue so something you already have quite often is more valuable than something you are trying to obtain or something you are trying to get a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush Here's, a, here's another one there are many idioms connected to dogs i don't know why but there are there are many idioms connected to owning a dog having a dog you might be dressed up like a dog's dinner if you are dressed up like a dog's dinner it means you are overdressed maybe you are wearing clothes that are too bright or too fancy you are dressed up like a dog's dinner a person who is wearing clothes that don't match or maybe they are too bright you are dressed up like a dog's dinner <laughs> here's another one involving dogs you are looking like a dog's hind leg if you look like a dog's hind leg it means you look a mess something is a mess so maybe if you are trying to do something and you make a mess and it looks awful you might say that it looks like a dog's hind leg it is a mess maybe if you are cutting someone's hair and maybe afterwards their hair is uneven it does not match you can say oh what have you done to that poor guy's hair it looks like a dog's hind leg it's not level it's not straight it's uneven it looks like a dog's hind leg you might let the cat out of the bag if you let the cat out of the bag it means you reveal a secret maybe a, a thing that you are not supposed to tell other people you let the cat out of the bag you reveal a secret maybe something that you were supposed to keep to yourself you let other people find out about it because you let the cat out of the bag you revealed a secret here's an interesting one you might hear this used from time to time kangaroo court so a court that does not follow all of the proper proceedings or rules maybe they already have decided that the person that they are going to put on trial is guilty so they have already decided what the outcome of the trial 
will be a kangaroo court it is not following the rules it is not a fair trial the court is not following the procedure because they've already decided that that person is guilty they are not following the rules we often describe this as a kangaroo court to be a fish out of water if you are a fish out of water it means you are a person in a strange place or maybe you are unfamiliar with your surroundings you are in a place that you are not familiar with you do not know the place where you are you are a fish out of water you are trying to do something that you are not qualified to do maybe you are in a place that you don't know you are a stranger in a strange place you are a fish out of water <laughs> here's another one <laughs> you might flog a dead horse so in this sense the word flog means hit or beat you flog a dead horse so the horse is dead there is nothing you can do to make that horse stand up but you are still trying to get it to stand up so this is a good idiom this means you are trying to do something that has already failed something that has already failed or has stopped working something that no longer works something that is no longer trendy or popular you flog a dead horse no one wants it no one is interested in that particular thing but you still try to get people to like it you are flogging a dead horse because the horse is dead it will never stand up again here's another one connected to horses you might close the stable door after the horse has bolted so the horse has run away but still you close the stable door even though the horse is gone it's pointless to do something too late so if you do something after the event you try to prevent something from happening after the thing has happened so you close the stable door after the horse has run away to do something maybe too late you do it at the wrong time you have left something for too long you close the stable door after the horse has bolted if a horse bolts it means it runs away in a hurry maybe because it's scared or afraid you might take the bull by the horns if you decide to do something that you don't want to or maybe something that might be dangerous or maybe something that you are hesitating to actually do suddenly you decide i'm going to take the bull by the horns to do something that you are reluctant to actually carry out or do you take the bull by the horns here's another one oh this is also connected to dogs as well let sleeping dogs lie sometimes it is best not to disturb a certain thing or to bring up a subject if it will disturb or upset people you let sleeping dogs lie you leave the dog because it might bite you so that idiom means sometimes it is best not to say something or do something or bring up a difficult subject don't do it let sleeping dogs lie because then you are staying out of trouble you will not cause any upset you will not upset any people because you let sleeping dogs lie forget about it 
forget about the problem forget about the difficult situation don't mention it let sleeping dogs lie can you think of any can you think of any animal idioms that I've missed out I wonder quite often we have to take the bull by the horns yes I think in life definitely quite often in life we are we have no choice we have to take the bull by the horns we have absolutely no choice in the situation sometimes you have to do something that you are reluctant to do you don't want to do that thing but sometimes you have to take the bull by the horns thank you very much for your company today we've had a lot of people on and I must be honest I'm quite pleased to see it <laughs> I'm very pleased to see you here today because it's Thursday and I'm not normally here on Thursday for the reasons that I explained earlier on I will be back on Sunday don't forget Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time is when I'm back from Sunday 2 p.m. UK time and of course Mr. Steve will be with us as well on Sunday before I go I couldn't resist showing some cute animals I wonder if you know what these animals are but I'm going to show them before we go so here are some cute animals some lovely animals to show you before we go maybe you have a favorite animal maybe there is an animal a type of animal that you love very much maybe one of the animals that I'm going to show today is also your favorite animal so here is the first one. Oh, this is so beautiful isn't this lovely oh mr. Duncan we are looking at cute animals so this particular animal is actually a baby it is a baby alpaca have you ever heard of an alpaca it is a very unusual type of animal it looks very similar to a camel very similar not exactly the same but very similar to a camel they, they don't have humps so camels sometimes have humps little bumps on their back but alpacas do not so this is an alpaca it is a baby alpaca and they are so cute very lovely here's another one before we go so this next animal is actually an adult so this is what the alpaca will look like when it gets older oh my goodness <laughs> that's not an alpaca that's Mick Jagger surely <laughs> alpacas there are many people now in the UK who love to keep alpacas so quite often if you have animals that you want to keep outside your house quite often you have to have a lot of space a lot of room where you live so there are many people now who like to buy not only a house but also some land as well and sometimes they will keep animals on the land and one of the most popular ones at the moment is the alpaca it does look very similar to a camel here's another one oh I think this is probably one of my most favorite animals certainly wild animals certainly an animal that you might see when you're you're walking around the countryside so I really love this I love this animal lovely cows and of course at the moment at the back of my house there are some cows living right behind my house at this very moment so I do like cows I love watching the cows in the field and all around the world well you might see cows in certain parts of your country especially if there is a lot of farming taking place here is another one. Oh, look at that. I don't know why, but whenever you see an animal,
that has large eyes they always look very cute have you noticed that so this particular animal looks very cute but also it has very large eyes as this is a roe deer roe deer it is a type of deer and it's beautiful very cute although this particular one does not look very happy it looks a little annoyed at something I don't know what <laughs> a lot of people saying the alpaca looks like it has bad teeth yes maybe it needs braces maybe it needs a retainer in its mouth so there it is a lovely roe deer here is another animal now that we often get flying over our house in fact we have <laughs> we have one of these in our garden oh look at that so there it is a heron heron very big birds large birds and they often eat fish especially around here because we live very close to a big river and quite often you will see these birds flying over the house they are going off to feed on fish sometimes they also steal fish from our neighbors gardens as well because some people round where i live they have ponds fish ponds So that is a heron heron a very large bird also a very beautiful bird here is another animal a baby animal that a lot of people are going to love i know i know it's going to happen oh mr duncan isn't that cute <laughs> it's a little cute lamb as you know in the area where I live there are many lambs that are born normally during early spring so yes quite often during the early springtime you will hear lots of lambs calling for their parents so yes I do like lambs they are beautiful Catherine says there is an expression to do something till the cows come home yes I think that's actually quite good yes I like that one yes to do something until the cows come home if you do something until the cows come home it means you continue doing it until very late maybe very late in the day or maybe you wait or you have to wait for a very long time I can listen to music until the cows come home it means I can do that thing for a very long time so yes that is another good idiom that uses an animal to do something until the cows come home it almost feels as if my live stream will continue until the cows come home but sadly it is not because it's almost time for me to go oh my goodness I can't believe how quick today's live stream has gone by it's gone by very quickly I will be back with you on Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time don't forget 2 p.m. UK time is when I'm back with you we have Mr. Steve back as well on Sunday joining us live I hope you've enjoyed this rather unusual live stream I am normally with you on Wednesday but today as you probably know I'm with you on Thursday <laughs> everything will be back to normal next week so don't worry this is Mr Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching before I go here is the answer to the mystery idiom Bunk. that is the mystery idiom but Mr. Duncan, what is the answer? Please give us the answer right now. Oh, now I have to be honest. Quite a few of you got it right. Well done. Many of you got this correct. Today's mystery idiom, splitting hairs. The meaning, to find tiny faults or to make trivial points during an argument. To focus on tiny details can be described as splitting 
has and there it was today's mystery idiom the answer has been revealed thanks for your company i am definitely going now thank you very much for all of your company and i hope to see you here on sunday don't forget if you like this please give me a big thumbs up there it is it says on my hat please like and then youtube will let more english addicts know about my live stream which will be ever so nice see you later take care i'm definitely going now i hope you have a good thursday i hope friday will be nice i hope saturday will be lovely <laughs> and i also hope that sunday will be fantastic because we will all be here once again back together and of course you know what's coming next <laughs> yes you do oh thank you to mr steve as well thank you mr steve for joining us today as well very nice oh ta-ta for now <laughs>